Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with another epic Rome 2 Siege Battle for you today and this is a 3v4 uh, replay sent in by a member of the Discord so this is going to be an excellent, excellent battle and uh, yes, as you can see here, the defenders are outnumbered but they are not outclassed they have uh, three uh, players on this side and we have four attackers with the Seleucids here facing down the Macedonians and the Carthaginians. We have the Lusitani facing down a Seleucid attacker and it looks like we have Macedon really going up against uh, an Arverni player and we have a lot of cavalry sallying out right now. We, I see a lot of Sarissa cavalry, I see uh, Thessalian cavalry going out against uh, the Arverni which looks like it's spamming out uh, chosen swords which is an interesting choice. We've got Carthag uh, not Carthaginian, we have a um, Seleucids coming out against the Carthaginians here and we have some Lusitani uh, Scutiari going out as well, so it'll be interesting to see what they can do. Looks like we're gonna have a charge here from the Citizen Cav. No, no. They're gonna try and go around, maybe try and attack the flanks of these archers here. Try and get these Cretan archers. That'll be a big win if they can get these guys. Yeah, here they go. Here they go. And this is a big win for the Seleucids early on. Getting a nice charge onto these Carthaginians. So if you guys have been enjoying the content at the moment, I would like to see more room to do remember to leave a like subscribe if you're new around here and a comment to show your support and there you go the Macedonians are going to come in and contain this cavalry as is the Carthaginian infantry and we are trying to reach 2k subscribers at the moment on the channel if you can if we can achieve that there will be a face reveal so if you haven't already subscribed and you enjoyed the content do remember to leave a uh, well think about subscribing but as you can see here, we have a, another cavalry battle going on Lusitani and the Seleucids fighting out against a unit of Macedonian cavalry. Macedonians probably will lose that slowly, but surely, yeah, citizen cavalry probably going to come out uh, losing that. I mean, it's camels are fight, facing, so I mean, camels have a really good uh, bonus against cavalry. They do scare them off. And uh, yeah, it looks like uh, the Scutiari cab went in here for a bit of a charge. I don't know if that was necess necessary. They'd already seen what was going to happen with the Carthaginians. The damage was done. Over on this side, it looks like Mastodon equally is having a bit of fun. He's uh, just harassing these units here. But, uh, I mean, he's trying to go for these archers. He's trying to go for these Gallic Hunters. He's hunting these guys down. They can stay hidden for a long, long time. I think he's trying to take out the crew, maybe, for the blister. Though it's a fixed one, so it's not as major to take out. All the mobile ones you want to take out because uh, they can be brought inside the walls and they can uh, start shelling positions. Like that Greek Onager over there on that hill, that would be a good target to take out. They still do have more cavalry. They have a Gemma cavalry. They have citizen more, more citizen cavs. So they have uh, other weapons up their sleeve they can use to certainly uh, slow down this assault. And it certainly has been slowed. You can see a lot of cavalry and a lot of infantry have been dedicated just to take out about two or three units of cavalry. Is it worth it? Possibly not. Uh, the start of the wall, the wall fight has started. We have some Macedonian thorax up against some Seleucid thorax by the looks of it. And it looks like the Macedonians are losing. Well, I was about to say winning. They are not winning. Um, it looks like two units going against one. And they're losing on both cases. Um, I think mainly because of the archers here. These archers, these Persian... Uh, no, these Syrian archers here, sorry. Not Persian. Are literally firing up onto the wall here and just destroyed these guys, quite likely. And, uh, well, I mean, you can see now they're just waiting for the Carthaginians to come down and do the same thing. And they're going to send some Thorax to deal with these guys. And yeah, look at the difference in armor. You've got like literally in a tunic here, these Car uh, these Carthaginian Iberians, and they're facing off against some pretty elite thorax Greek style swords. They're not going to be beaten. And it looks like Carthage is going to use some Carthaginian hoplites and come down this way, but he's going to be met with more, uh, well, Seleucids, and this time it's Hillman. Probably will get through them in time, but this is just to slow him down. This is there's no way he expects to win this. this the Seleucids, he just wants to slow them down and uh, see what he can do. But I mean, the Seleucids really need to be, uh, I'd say, attacking because I think the Lusitani is the weakest link out of this. I think, um, well, they don't have great armor, so if you just like shell them with arrows or artillery or whatever, you'll do a lot of damage. Look at this sharp stone, like minefield going on over here. It definitely That's probably why Seleucid's moved across. He's seen this and thought, I am not attacking that. Not any day of my life. And I mean, looks like there's going to be a wall of Arverni siege towers coming up. They all won't land on this wall, but some of them certainly will. 
I mean, at least you can get the uh, portable scorpions to the wall and then just shoot over the walls. That's always a good tactic. It looks like um, the camels are still doing their d duty over here. They're still harassing things. They've actually taken out artillery here of Carthage. This is big. They're taking this out. I presume that's with the wall artillery. Yeah, I think it's with Lusitani's wall artillery there. He's, they've taken that out. So that's big. Um, the camels, I guess, will go after like maybe archers, maybe like these Rodian slingers. Yeah. Looks like these Rodian slingers are about to die. Camel spearmen. You got to fear the camels. Camels are uh, never to be underestimated. And here they come. Oh no, maybe not. They're just going to stand there. Oh, I thought they were actually going to go in and attack. There's 33 guys or 31 guys you can go take out. 31 more kills for this camel unit. Yep, there you go. And yeah, those guys. Oh. Oh yeah, they're dead. <laughs> they're very dead. Um, and now it looks like on the wall, yeah, you can see the same thing's happening here. The Sluice is just putting minimal troops up onto this wall. And they're getting maximum kills with their archers. And this is always a great tactic. Just hold on the wall. I mean, even if it's a worse unit than this, if it's Hillman or if it's... A Thorax is probably actually a perfect unit for this. It's pretty strong. It can do a lot of damage on its own, deal a lot of damage. But it's not too expensive that it it's a, a loss just to do this tactic. So, I mean, they are only taking out other Thorax, but I mean, they're getting some really good kills. They can certainly, I mean, Mastodon's already lost quite a lot of stuff. I mean, he's actually inside the walls here. It seems like they've uh, kind of left themselves a bit short here of the defenders. And Mastodon has managed to get Thorax inside. But these are his best swords for the Mastodon. Like, they can't bring any other, like, interesting stuff. But the Mastodonian player over here, the allied one, the defender one, has got some units here you can flank around, as is Lusitani. Looks like we're going to see a charge from the veteran shield warriors here. And they're going to go into the backs of these thorax. But here you go. The war cry goes up. Some javies out. They're, oh, some great kills there. And they're going to charge into the back. And they will surround and probably route this unit. As uh, it looks like more arrows are coming. Oh, uh, no, arrows. Javies are coming over as well. The Thoros spears doing their bit. And yeah, it looks like, uh, yeah, they're all gone. That was a really, really good charge. That was a good charge by the Veteran Shield Warriors. And that's how you want to use them, as a flanking unit. Which is why Lusitani has to be a support faction the entire time. It's never good on its own, I don't think. It needs to be supported by other strong factions like Mastodon, like Seleucid. And it can do really good. It just need, relies on Mastodon and Seleucid to hold the line. And they'll do a lot of flanking charges like that. They'll do that all day long. Them holding the line, they're probably not going to do that great. Um, they'll hold against some stuff, but not against most. And it looks like the Hillmen are now going onto the walls to try and uh, slow these guys down. But these are hot plights. Don't really need to go on the to wall contest against this, but... There they go. Got late Libyans up there. That's just intro Don't often see that unit on the battlefield. They're going to fight it out against these uh, Hillmen, and they're probably going to win. But it's going to be slow because it's Spears fighting on a wall. And Spears fighting on a wall is painfully slow. On the other side, let's have a look and see how Arverni's doing. Arverni is now assaulting the walls. He's just got a mass amount of troops on the walls. And it's the same thing happening over here. We've got uh, Militia Hot Plights. Very poor unit. Even better to use Militia Hot Plights, it would seem. Very poor unit. But they'll hold back the Chosen Swords while Archers, like Creedon Archers, Rodian Slingers, just do the damage. And just wreck. Well, the lives. I mean, it's just so much better for the cost-benefit. And I'm sure these guys are getting, like, loads of kills. Let's have a look. 50. Oh. Okay, these are only mere archers. They've got Cretans here. But, I mean, they have, they've they got some archers as well. They're not getting great amount of kills yet. But I'm sure they will. If we have a look at, like, say, the Seleucids over here. They're 76, 79, 37, 34. That's pretty good. That's a good start. I'm sure they've got plenty of ammo left. They just don't want to allow their Cretan archers here to get focused down and killed. I mean, they're going to get possibly killed by these Gallic Hunters. Have they still got cavalry? Mm, they have, actually. Still got a Citizen Cav. This is a very fresh Citizen Cav. Oh, and it's going to go in and take out this Onager. That's a shame. Seleucid just abandoned that. They've got light cavalry as well that they could have sent over there to go and deal with it. That's really fast-moving Cav. They're fighting something in here already, but they're losing. What are they fighting in here? Is it more Seleucids? And I just can't tell. Oh, it is more Seleucids. Citizen Cavalry's gone in here to deal with this. Okay. They have uh, Citizen Cavern here. 
Trying to slow these guys down. Are they citizen cav? They are. are they fight. What the heck? Are they? Oh, they're finally a gamer here of the general. I did wonder. I kept seeing like spears appear, and it's like citizen cav doesn't have spears. But there you go. That's the gamma cav of the general, and they're going to deal with that. But it's allowed. That sacrifice has allowed them to take out the onager, and they should really now go over to the other one, take out the uh, Celtic giant blister. Deal with that, and you uh, basically nullify a lot of their uh, firing capability. And it looks like the general's already gone in combat for Mastodon. Royal Peltas dealing with some chosen swords. They should deal with these guys quite easily. The chosen swords are trying to come off the wall and fight a fully, fully strength unit. Mastodon against Arverni. That's a weird, um, a weird combo. And we've got pikes here. These foot companions, they'll be a really good unit to bring. If they had two, three of, like, units here, they could just hold this wall. So effectively. I mean, it looks like they're going to have to send a lot more troops here, though. Mastodon is already having a rough time. Or is he going to try and hold this choke point here? I don't know. But it might be time to, uh, think about falling back a little bit. I think they're overextended. Lusitani is going to have to send more troops down this way. But he's got a lot of Carthaginians still to deal with. This cavalry's going to have to mobilize. It's going to have to do something. It's going to have to slow down one of the attackers. Looks like he's going to be uh, Seleucid again. That's going to get the uh, the Agema cavalry now. So more elite cavalry coming around. They need to take out these Syrian heavy archers. They're a really good uh, arch unit. I think most of the Cretans got taken out. For... Well, certainly for Carthage. I don't know about Mastodon. Mastodon may still have quite a few. But Mastodon looks spent already. Look at this. This is all that's left of Mastodon. This was a full army at one point. Jeez, he's having a really rough time. I don't know if he's brought pikes, actually. I don't think he has. Oh, that's a shame. He's having a... I had a rough day. Is this Macedonian player? And uh, these veteran shield warriors are actually holding their own. I mean, with the support of these Thorios in here, they're doing okay. And that, they'll probably hold their fridge. I mean, you can see here, Mastodon is uh, still breaking. And they're still sending more over. They're still worried about this? I would say this is a job done. Um, maybe these Thorax are going over to uh, the allied Mastodon player. Because, I mean, Arverni's still got a lot of swords. And he's still got a lot of his archers. His archers stayed intact. They didn't seem to succeed on taking theirs out. And they're just focusing down uh, the Cretans and the uh, basic archers here. So, I mean, that could be a... That could be the reason why those Thorax are moving. I'd carry on moving these guys along, but they don't look like they are. Well, they're quite happy to say that. Oh, here you go. Again, the cavalry going in against uh, light cavalry. And you're going to see what happens uh, when you send light cavalry in against anything that's not, like, archers. They get absolutely massacred. And, yeah, with the help of that tower, that's probably helped massively. Massively. Uh, yeah, those again, cavalry didn't lose a single soul. And, yeah, they did go on take out that... Uh, I think that Blister, I think it's dead. Wow. They've done a really good job in taking out Arturi in this game, the defenders. And, I mean, balance power is still in favor of the attackers because they have the numbers. But, I mean, they're losing the init like uh, the initiative and a lot of their, like, really key tools to, like, take this city. They're losing Arturi. They're losing Archers. Eventually going to be just left with the choice of just assaulting, like, the positions. And they've got pikes of the defenders, which I don't think any of the attackers decided to bring. Carthage might... I don't think so. Um, I haven't checked the... I know the Macedonians don't. I don't know about the attacking Seleucids either. But they look like they had a lot of Thorax and Silver Shield. And obviously Arverni can't bring pikes. Being a Gaelic faction. But they'll bring a lot of Chosen Swords. And they'll do their damage. But certainly... They don't have enough choke points. Uh, they don't have enough pikes to defend all the choke points either to do the defenders. They need to be careful with their pikes. Let's have a quick look, see if there are any pikes for the... Uh, I'm going to say no for the attacking Seleucids. I'd say they haven't brought any. I can definitely see some for the uh, Carthaginians. Yeah, African pikes. Two units. No surprise there. 
So, I mean, they have got pikes that are the attackers. So, they might need to use them wisely themselves to uh, unlock this defense. But there you go. More units breaking. It's all because of the archers. All because of the archers. I mean, this is also very heavy against uh, heavy. But I would almost doubt the Thorax to beat Chosen Swords. In my personal view, I think Thorax is one of the most dodgy... Uh, very heavy sword units you can get. But there you go. Look at this flank again by the Veteran Shield Warriors. Oh, and they're just being backed onto pikes. Right now, if there's a chance... Oh, they don't have any archers here, so they're pretty safe. That's a shame. The attackers should have taken this advantage. These pikes have come a long way forward to use archers, but they've uh, got none over here. So it's kind of down to a 3v3 now. Mastodon is finished. They've done a really good job on focusing down one of the players. Mastodon was the unlucky soul. Um, I'd say Seleucid's had a pretty rough time as well. But not as rough as Mastodon, it would seem. And, uh, yeah, it's now already a 3v3. But obviously, I'd still say the attackers have a chance. And here we go. It looks like we've got them Libyan infantry facing off against some of their uh, Iberian enemies. It's the Lusitani veteran shield warriors again. Yeah, these guys would have uh, almost been fine for the Carthaginians at one point. But not today. They're fine against them. But you can see, look at their armor, like the Lusitani. They don't have great armor, and they don't have great shields. They're very small, and uh, yeah, like in prolonged melee, they won't last. And when they're being shot at, they won't last. I mean, they're winning actually. This uh, slightly. I mean, they're fighting spears. I'll be why. If they're fighting for uh, like other swords, like I don't know, Libyan infantry, possibly they will probably lose. I don't know. I would have said so. Certainly with archer support, they'll lose. If they can get a. I mean, with no arch support, they will lose. Like, these Libyan Pelt, I should get on the wall. Start jabbing these guys. They've all got no uh, protection. But they're now swinging over some Syrian heavy archers. Which they can, because Masson's finished. All these archers can swing here. They can deal with them. And Carthage has lost most of his archers. So he's lost most of his range ability. He's got some Pelt left. That's it. So, I mean, they did really well on taking out Carthage's archers. And just most of Macedon. It's really Seleucid that's like the most intact out of all of them, I'd say, possibly. He lost a lot of his cavalry, but cavalry at this point is not a major thing. And he lost his artillery, but he's got archers uh, for healthy. He's got like, yeah, healthy archers, healthy swords, and spears. I'd say I'm expecting, Car uh, not Carthage, I'm expecting Seleucids here to do most of the heavy lifting. Arverni seems to get stuck on this wall. He needs to just like, he's got a spare tower here. Just send it like up here. Send it and go and attack around here. Stretch out the uh, Macedonians. If they did that, then that would certainly... And uh, Macedon's got no infantry over here that can, like, get there in a quick enough time. And not enough, anyway. They're, uh, they're quite happy just defending this small section of the wall. We've got Thoros Spears. These Thorax are breaking. At, they're breaking at 65 or wavering at 65. That's poor. That's what I'm saying. That's a very heavy sword unit that's supposed to be. And that's and that's wavering now. That's uh, that's not great. But they're getting surrounded. I mean, they are getting surrounded in fairness. But uh, and yeah, the Thoros are now losing. Yeah, they're actually going to run out of stuff here on Mastodon. Um, Lusitani might need to send some stuff across, but he's also now going to deal with the Seleucids, who have landed. Who have landed, and we've got the Thorax Pikes coming up. They need to be careful to the uh, Seleucids. Because they do have archers still. Do the attacking Seleucids. It's a Seleucid civil war. Couldn't ask for anything else. It's like Christmas come early. And there they're going to the Thorax Pikes. So they've, just, they've charged them in. They charged them in instead of putting the Pikes up. And here you go. The Pikes are going up now. Bits. I'll just ease them in. Ease the units in. And let the Pikes arrive. I feel like the Archers were just sent into combat while the Pikes are set up. But the so Pikes aren't set up properly. They're not set up over this side. You could definitely almost flank around. There is a gap. I'd say you could probably get around that. The Pikes need to be careful. If the Sluicer player was being, uh, like, had his eyes peeled, he'd see that. You can see here, the uh, veteran shield warriors are getting pushed back. That's what happens when they face uh, 
But they've not lost that many, actually. They're still healthy numbers, but they're facing stronger units, I'd say. And here comes the cavalry. What's the Seleucid cavalry going to do here, then? Is he going to go for a charge? He might go for the uh, Gamma cavalry. I think they're going to go for the general. Because the general can't obviously go up the walls, so they've kind of got into this sticky position like, do we dismount him, send him up the walls? Dismount him, he loses most of his power. Um, so, yeah, here we go, look at this, they're going to try and go for an exclusive general assassination. I wouldn't call this a snipe at all, uh, because there's literally nothing for this cavalry really to go for. They, w Why would you charge into uh, the Thorios? You wouldn't. But yeah, this, uh, this uh, cavalry's in uh, trouble. They're going to try and bring the other one across. Or they might just charge the uh, Thorios. Then they are. They're going to charge this? This is a bold, bold move. It did actually work. Uh, they dev definitely ran down a lot. I thought this, like, the square was sort, sort, sort of supposed to be anti-cav, but it's it's not. We'll put it like that. After that showing, I wouldn't say it's anti-cav. Um, a Gamma Cav winning here. They need to send in, the, like, their own Gammas. Just 2v1 the Gamma. With their own gamers. And uh, yeah, these Thorios are getting knocked about. They're going to die. And uh, yeah, I, I have a feeling this... Uh, yeah, he's already losing decisively. Oh, he's gone combat even now. But uh, yeah, he could be in trouble because that is Seleucid General. That could cause a chain route. Because the defenders have boxed him in well here. I mean, he's definitely trying to flank around. He needs to get this unit off the wall quickly. Does the uh, attacking Seleucid get it off? There's only some Syrian archers down there. Then you can get behind these pikes and cause uh, them to route. And then you might unlock this uh, this route, but you're gonna you're gonna lose a lot. I mean, he's got plenty of swords here. Get these guys off the wall. He's only facing archers here. Maybe he doesn't know that, but there's not much here. There is not much. If he had, it's like really goes for it, he could do that. But I mean, he's doing the same thing that the Alverni did on this side. He's wanting to focus on one area, literally one wall or one like section of the city or two streets, in like the case of the Seleucids. And it's just allowing the defenders to box up. I mean, they've actually done a good job here of Arvinity, but this is just easy kills for the archers. I don't know if they're still firing, but I mean, the archer tower here is firing. That can fire literally from here down onto that wall. That's insane. But yeah, I mean, this is just... At what cost? The Arvinity have made literally no gain. And all because they just couldn't, like, not attack this wall. They needed to... Like, they just should have gone, right, we're attacking this wall, we're losing men... Maybe send up minimal more troops, and then send more like on this wall here. Maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe even attack this wall here. This wall might be okay, but they've got three towers. They don't like they. They also send up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, probably about no seven towers, eight towers possibly, and uh, they, that's all just to assault this one bit. You don't need to do that. Like that many towers up on a wall doesn't matter. You probably could have done four there, maybe three even. You could have sent some here, like I said, sent some over there. And you would achieve a certainly stretching out the defenders, especially when it's a 3v4. And they're already, like, down on their uh, troops. You definitely could do with their stretching them. If you, like, just stay in one area, like they have here, you're just helping the, uh, helping the defenders who, like, at this point, they're probably like, thank God the Arverni are just boxing themselves on this wall. Like, they're able to now send across, like, generals. They're able to send across, uh, Baleic Slingers. They've got, like, stuff here. They don't even need these swords here. They're sending spears across. Deal with the stuff. And, uh, I mean, Carthage is actually making some ground. But he's, like, come across a long way. He's come a long way. He's, uh... Are these... What's all this pikes down here? Yeah, there's pikemen down here. Mastodon's pikes are in the combat. And I think they just... Did they go into combat and not set up? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, they did not do their whatever right. And, I mean, these Thorax Pikes here, oh, my God. They are going to, like, rack up the kills. Are these... Look at that. There is no way through this. These Sacred Band, such an elite unit. And they're going to send more in. Thing is, they shouldn't have sent three units down either. Just send one. Let it just pin the Pike unit here. Get off another wall, like, over here, here. Wherever you just got to like I said stretch them stretch them thin you'll eventually break through You may not obviously win on every front and you then just got to be like well I won't win on every front then that's just gotta accept that as an attacker you may lose on some Because you're attacking pikes, 
But that unit's sacrificing itself for a reason, so others can get off the wall, start flanking, and uh, causing havoc. But obviously, as you can see here, the sluices have been boxed in now to this area here, this, like, section of the wall, of the street, sorry, of, well, of the city. And uh, there's literally no other streets from the get out. They can go back on the wall uh, and go around, but they'll just get followed. So really, they've got to just stand here and die. And you can see uh, Sluice's general is dead. Um, I think, literally, it's just Carthage and Arverding left. I thought Sluice was going to do the heavy lifting. He tried to. He certainly probably got the furthest into the city than anyone else. But uh, that's not that impressive. It's lo not much further than Carthage or um, Arverni. And Macedon even probably got just as far. And he died first. But I mean, it's a really well played game by the defenders. And you can see here the pikes coming in. That's just going to... That's going to sink them. That's probably the uh, Thorax Pikes, yeah. I don't know what happened to the Foot Companions. Maybe they died pretty early on. I don't know. Oh, Arverni is off the wall, though. Well, at least he's got off the wall. At least he has a, a bit of an entertaining game. I feel so awful. I'm s <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Arverni could have made this game so much easier for him himself if he uh, had just attacked in more than one spot. But he's uh, cutting down archers. Which I'm sure is enjoyable. And he's going for this cat point, I think. Because he thinks this is the main cat point. Which is not. Um, he needs to go this way. And this is the main cat point here for Petra. You need to come and take this. You need to take this famous palm tree. Because everyone uh, worships this palm tree in Petra. It's very strange. I don't question it when I visit. And look at that. That's a sandwich and a half. That was uh, some... Leaving infantry sandwich between some veteran shields and uh, foot companions. Oh, there's the foot companions. I did literally was wondering where they'd gone. And, uh, yeah. They're still alive. It looks like, uh, well, look at this. The general here, the general bodyguard. What's he going to do? Just stand here and get himself shot? It's a bit... Oh, he's going to try and burn the gatehouse down. I'll just dismount him at this point. The, uh, the, the game's up, I think. There's only a minute and a bit left. Seleucid's not going in. I mean, he could possibly, like, burn the gate down then run for the center. But I think, like, they've got this Gamma Cav running around, dude, the Seleucids. And look at that. Huge chain route by the uh, Thorax in the front line. They haven't sent in their reserves now. It's because the Pikes are here. You just can't stop the Pikes. The Thorax Pikes will beat you. They'll poke you to death. And, I mean, Thorax Pikes and the uh, Veteran Shield Warriors as a combo is really nice. I'll have to try that out sometime. But, I mean, it's you've got to uh, then do the sally out. If you're going to play as Lusitani, I feel like you've got to sally and do a heavy sally and take out as many of their archers as possible. Because, uh, oh, look at that. That unit's routed. That's a full unit, 114 routed. All this is just routed. So that's Seleucid out. Seleucid's finished. Um, I think Arverni's finished. He's just routed. I think his general must have died and he's chain routed. And it's just Carthage left with... Uh, well, looks like his general and I was going to say mercenary nobles, but they've broken the pikes, got through. Not quite sure how, but they have. And they're going to run for the town center. I think they're going to get run down by this cavalry here. Yeah, this cavalry is slowly moving up. But they're going to get routed by Thorax, probably. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, it's so well done by the defenders. A 3v4, I'm very impressed that they uh, managed to win this. Usually, defenders need every single man they can get, and deducting themselves an army was uh, pretty bold of them, but they did it. This Thorax, if he's got ammo left, should just stand and shoot. And, uh, yeah, they're going to turn around and face the... Oh, they're going to break. Yeah, yeah. And there you go. A costly victory for the Lusitani and their allies. So, we'll end the replay and have a look at the end results. So, uh, Lusitani was played by Aiden. Who sent this in? So uh, thank you to Aiden for sending this in. It's an excellent replay. Definitely worth showing off, like a three v four, and how like possible it is to win them. Um, but yeah, he got 142 kills with his uh, Scutiari cavalry, which is pretty good for them. They're not like the greatest cavalry, but they're pretty, they're pretty solid. Um, his Lusitani nobles, like his general, got 72 kills. His Baleric Singh is getting 208, the best one. His Iberian swords, 61 kills. His uh, veteran shield warriors, I mean, he spammed these guys out. 312, 227, 235, 
341. Wow, some very good kills there. Uh, so, yeah, well done to Aiden. Coops, who's playing as Macedon, the defending Macedon. Um, 175 kills with his Royal Pell tasks, uh, which is his general. His uh, Sarissa cavalry getting only 47, and his Sassalian cavalry getting 50, which is okay. His uh, Cretan archers getting 50, 154 and 192. His foot companions getting 112 kills and a barely a scratch on them. So they could have gone into like the like the hundreds, got like 300 plus possibly. His uh, thorax swords did pretty damn well. The best one uh, getting like 238. I mean, I say pretty damn well. The rest actually didn't do great. His thorax spears um, getting 80 kills, which is okay for them really. They're not great at thorax spears. And then the Seleucid player, uh, the defending one played by Joshi the Great. Uh, who was uh, spamming out those citizen cavalry for sh for sure? I mean, it, the best one getting 78 kills. I mean, his camels actually did really well, getting 233, and his Agema cavalry, um, which his general was in another unit, getting 144. Uh, his Syrian heavy archers, 155 kills, the best one. His uh, thorax pikes, 318 and 294. If there was more kills available, I think they could have gone a lot higher as well. They were pretty fresh still. Um, his Thorax Swords did okay, 125, and his Thoria Spears getting 81 kills. Then Bossman, who was playing as the Seleucids, the attacking Seleucids, um, his general getting 93 kills. His Light Cavalry just got, well, outmatched by the Agemas, only getting 23 kills. His Greek Onager getting nothing, which is a shame. His Sujimut's money put into it and getting no kills and didn't even destroy a wall. Um, his Archers, yeah, got mauled as well and didn't get many kills. His uh, Thorax Swords which he spammed out, uh, he got 112 kills, I think the best, uh, which is a bit of a poor return, especially when that's uh, your main infantry line. And uh, Carthage then we'll move on to, who was played by Nicholas Perez, and uh, his uh, archers, again, also didn't do great, they seemed to get like charged down by early cavalry charges, uh, only getting 12 kills, like the top one. His Carthaginian hoplites getting 171 kills, his... Uh, Libyan Infantry, the best one, getting 133. His Sacred Band, a really good unit, getting 104 kills, which means it's okay for a spear unit, but I expect a bit more from Sacred Band usually. And uh, his Mercenary Noble Fighters only getting 41 kills, which is the most shocking result there of them all. And his uh, African Pikes getting 7 kills between the two of them. And Macedon, the attacking Macedon player, played by uh, Lethan, who is... Uh, he did okay. I mean, he was the first out. He was uh, pretty unlucky. He seemed to get a, have a pretty rough ride with the cavalry. His uh, thorax, you can see here, did awful. Uh, really, uh, only getting 85 kills. Really unlucky for him. His hot plates, which I think he brought far too many for an attacking force. Uh, only getting 35 kills. Um, his slingers, he only brought slingers, which is uh, not a great move. Definitely want to bring um, archers because slingers have to fire a direct line. While archers can loop their shots, obviously. So, and they didn't get many kills at all. Only getting nine is the top one. His citizen cavalry getting 53 kills. So, yeah, he was kind of unlucky there. And then Thunder, who's playing as the Arverni. Um, he spanned out those chosen swords. He got, well, at least uh, 12 of them, I think. And, uh, I mean, the best one there, 112 kills, I think. So many. There's one there with zero kills. So many getting focused down by archers by Macedon. Uh, so, he did really well there. So, uh, Gaelic Hunters getting 89 kills. And his general Oath Swan getting 69 kills, which is uh, pretty poor for that as well. But if you guys enjoyed this Rome 2 siege trial, please do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and leave a comment, Legionnaires. And uh, yeah, we'll do that face reveal at 2k. And uh, well, yeah, if you want to do, I'd definitely be down to try some 3v4s out now after doing that. So if you haven't already joined the Discord, please do join the Discord down below in the description and we can get some 3v4 battles organized because I think it would be a really kind of good idea to try out and it certainly will improve your defending skills uh, being outnumbered by a whole army. And if you succeed, then, well, you can be impressed with yourself. And until next time, Legionnaires, bye for now.